Hello, New Hope. Pastor Gary here. I hope this video finds everybody doing well. And peace is ruling in your hearts. I want to talk to you just briefly about being born again and coming into the kingdom of God. We have some powerful scriptures. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, As many as received him, to them gave he the power or the privilege or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we are sons and daughters of God because he chose first, but then we in turn choose back. He's given us the right. He's given us the privilege. He's given us the power and the strength. And according to 2 Peter chapter 1, he's given us every spiritual gift that we need to succeed and become a son or a daughter of God. So now, I want to look at some scripture from 1 John, not the Gospel of John that I quoted earlier, but 1 John chapter 3. Some powerful thoughts about this son-father relationship that we all can have. It's God's will that we all have it, that we walk in this new life that God has given us. John wrote, Behold, I love a couple of these huge words here. Behold, pay attention. Listen to this. It's like somebody shakes you and says, listen to me. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. God has freely given this to us, that we should be called the children of God. Wow. Wow. Because of that, or therefore, the world does not know us. They can't know what it's like being a child of God. If they're not a child of God also, only children of the king can know and understand what it is to be a child of the king. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. It all starts with the relationship with Christ and knowing Jesus as our personal Savior. The next word that I love here in this passage is beloved, verse 2. Beloved, and there's a timing word here. When I, when I read scripture, I look for timing words. Many of you know me as someone who loves end time stuff. Uh, eschatology, the study of the end and events that take place in the end. And I'm forever and a day looking for timing words. There's a timing word here, and it's a critical timing word. Beloved, now. Now, somebody said in the Greek that word, that word means right now. It means now. Now are we the sons of God and daughters. And even though we are sons and daughters now, it doesn't yet appear what we will be like. You know, I have morphed. A lot has happened to me in the years that I've known the Lord. I was a senior in high school, 17 years of age, when I walked an aisle in Old Berean. And worst sinner of all, cried my eyes out before the Lord. And he accepted me as his child, then and there. I can take you back to, because the building still exists, and the last time I was in it, just a few years ago, the same pews, the same altar, it was all the same, was still there. And if it is today, which I believe it is, I can take you to the very spot, and I can tell you the very time that I found Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And now he's my elder brother. So, we are now sons and daughters of God. 
but it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. And that's a twofold thing. I'm way different than I was when I was 17 years old. I put on a lot of weight. My hair has turned color. I have about a third less teeth, more or less. Um, other health things that you get as you age. But from all those years ago, I knew I was a child of the king. And nothing has been able to change that. Nothing can change that. Nothing at all. So it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. Now he's also talking about not just our spiritual growth and, and how we continue to grow in the Lord, but he's also talking about here when this body dies and I go to the next realm instantaneously, I'm in the presence of the Lord, absent from this body, present with the Lord. The scripture is, is very clear about that. What are we going to be like? Well, we're going to be like what Jesus was like. When he shall appear, we shall see him as he is. We know that when he appears, the rapture of the church, we're going to be like him. What was he like? Well, the Bible talks about it in some depth. He just, just showed up. You can read about this in Luke's gospel. Two disciples, one named Cleopas, were walking away from Jerusalem. It was the worst day of their life and the best day. Three days before, their Savior and Lord had been crucified, killed, nailed to a cross, abruptly and quickly buried before the Passover. And three days later, the women said he, ro he rose from the dead. They seen him. And so they're talking about this. And instantaneously, Jesus appeared and was in their midst. And he went with them and he expounded all things concerning himself. We don't know what it's going to be like. But when Jesus comes, when Jesus appears, we're going to be like him. Does that mean we'll be able to instantaneously go from one place to another, just all of a sudden appear? I don't know. But there's some cool stuff that's awaiting us. Here's the key. This is key. You have to accept him first. And then he gives you the power to become a child of the king. Lord, go with your people today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time.